Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a really long time since we've done a video, and there's been some changes here and there. There'll be a channel update video later on, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of why we're here. Today, we're gonna be unboxing this, the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. Just came out, it's just about getting stateside now. So be checking your local hobby stores, this should be showing up, and if you ordered from a retailer, your pre-orders are probably going out sometime this week. I hope to get this out. Today is the 30th of January. I hope to get this out tomorrow or the day after. But basically what we're going to do is I'm going to unbox this. I'm going to unbag every runner. That part will be kind of ASMR-y, if you will. We're going to have a little bit of ASMR flavor to that because this is going to be my next build on the channel. And then after I unbox everything, unbag everything, we'll go over the runners and kind of what my strategy is going to be. The rest of the video is going to be a top-down perspective because let's face it, this isn't why you're here. This is why you're here. So let's unbox the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. Here we have the A-plate. As you can see, most of it is in the curry gold injection. We have some blue down here, some translucent blue. And up here, some translucent red. Now, when the kit was first announced, I didn't necessarily like the translucent red, so these will be getting a flat coat of paint, just a standard color paint. This curry gold will also be getting painted as well. I'm not sure if I'll be detailing this because a lot of it seems like it will be covered up by body pieces. Like this I know gets a, a black plate on it because this is right on the chest. But these blue pieces will probably remain translucent. I probably won't touch those as this is mostly camera sensors and things such as. Here we have the B plate. This is in plated gold. A lot of this are Dragoon parts, as you can see. Some joint parts over here. And some armor pieces. So this is inside of the skirting armor. Probably the knees, if I had to take a guess. It is undergated, as you can see here, on this knee piece. Some of it is gated so close that you shouldn't have much of a problem and it won't leave much marks. And then some of it is gated right on the piece itself, as you can see here. So if this isn't covered up by armor, you may get a nasty black spot there. But given that this is the perfect grade extreme, I would like to think that Bandai engineered this so then any of these nub marks would be covered up by armor pieces. 
That is the B plate, a very nice looking plate. Has me really excited to get tearing into this. Here we have the C plate, which is molded in a type of bronzish type gold. This is a lot of the inner framing and vents, small detail parts, things that will stick out in the kit itself. Here we have the C plate. This is a lot of inner framing details and it's molded in a sort of bronzish type gold. We have a lot of vent type pieces. These probably end up going on the wings. And it will look really nice once all these golds come together to make the frame. And when these peek out from the armor opening gimmick and from the armor separation gimmick from articulation, they will look really, really nice. It's cool to see all these golds come together to complement one another. Here we have the D plate. Some more armor pieces. This is probably the shoulder armor and whatnot. This is in a type of molded, more metallic-y type gold. This is the thruster in the rear. Parts of the guns. Probably the rail guns if I had to guess. This looks much, much better than the curry gold. This is kind of what I was hoping we would see more of, but unfortunately we have more of that curry type gold, but this looks really, really good. A fair amount of undergating. A lot of it seems to be, a lot of these plates seem to be 50-50 undergating. Some of it is, some of it isn't. So here we have the E1 plate. The E plates are usually always some type of armor, some leg armor here gun piece, shin armor, leg armor. So from here, from here down is all leg armor and that's shared between E1 and E2. Here we have the headpiece, headpiece and the first V fin, the mouthpiece. And then probably what looks like some skirting armor and again, what looks to be more 50-50, like half the runner's undergated, the other half isn't. Here we have the F1 and the F2 plate. These are a shared plate, but not much. This, I believe it's mostly just here down as uh, gun pieces and whatnot. This is some inner framing. This is probably the armpit area and probably more of the chest face here. Tons of surface detail on these pieces. It's just begging for someone with a thin paintbrush and a lot of time to put all that time and effort into it. That would look really, really nice seeing this fully fleshed out, fully detailed, but that would be <laughs> very time consuming, not something I would do on the channel that would be very hard to film. And here's F2 by itself, mostly gun pieces here and here, because remember we've got two of that same gun. And then what looks like some joint pieces up and around. Let's get that surface detail in there. Very nice kit. Love the surface detail on this. And then there's some undergating, not a heck of a lot. Some undergating there. A lot of it looks uh, pretty like, you know, normal, normal gating. Here we have the G plates. This is a duplicate, one-to-one -one duplicate. So I'm only gonna show one plate here. This is the plate that had a loose piece in shipping. This is probably more frame piecing and whatnot. It's in that curry gold color, a lot of dragoon pieces, I believe, and a lot of joint pieces. This is stuff that's probably relatively covered up, so it might not be as bad or as ugly as I thought it was going to be. I will definitely be reading the instructions. 
to go over these plates, see what's a joint piece and what's well covered and what isn't. And I'll probably absolutely paint this to be a, a more pleasing gold to me. That's the important thing about Gunplas. You can kind of do anything you want with it. Again, another 50-50 type undergating type plate. Some pretty well undergated pieces there. And that is the G plates. Here we have the H plates. There's only one small variance between the plates and that's here and here. This is your chest armor and this is your kind of backpack armor. The rest is all wing items. So we're gonna take a look at the little booster. This connects the wings, the thruster, the rear thruster, main rear thruster. I believe this is all main rear thruster pieces. And the rest is all for the wings itself that holds on to the dragoons. So much more surface detail, even than the perfect grade strike freedom. They really did, uh, it's almost like they're trying to compete with metal builds at this point. But I'm, I am loving the surface detailing here. All these vents and whatnot, that looks so good. I love that, that's, that's just scratching every itch for me. Incredible looking kit. And here are the chest pieces. The front of the chest and the rest of the wings are the same. Pretty well undergated, that's a pretty big gate right there as well as down there, that looks a little obnoxious to try and cut out. So you'll definitely kind of want an X-Acto knife and a steady hand for this. Fair amount of undergating on these wings, and I'm pretty, pretty surprised by it, to be honest with you. Here we have the eye plates. I'm only going to show you the I-1 plate because I-2 is identical with some omissions. All that's missing from I-2 is these two chest pieces. The rest is the same. Mostly Dragoon parts. The Dragoons are a large part of the blue that's on this kit. Some foot pieces. But these are mostly Dragoons and vents. And the gun piece. All these Dragoons are undergated. Look at the interior of that detail there. That might be, that. I think that's for the foot. So I'm not, <laughs> all that surface detailing there is going to get covered up, but holy smokes. They went, they went a little crazy with all that. You know, if you get really creative, you really could just have a heyday with this kit. Here we have the J plates. J1 has a head, the rear of the head, and I believe the bottom, like the neck of the head on it. But these are mostly just off-color white plates. Barely off-white, just slightly different from the main body. And this is to break up the armor in uh, a real grade type of style. Way, way more surface detailing. And about 50-50 undergating. J2 has some skirting armor and probably some shoulder armor if I had to take a guess. Just some armor separation and color separation pieces. Here we have the K plates. I'm only going to show you K1 because it's an identical copy of K2. Except it has these chest vents on it. The rear thruster vent, the cheek mold, and whatever these are, which I would assume is something for the rail guns, because the rest of this is all for the rail guns. Because you build two rail guns, there's basically two sets of rail gun pieces here. Not a lot of undergating on this that's okay. Not everything has to be undergated. Here we have the L runners. Two L runners with L2 being a copy of L1. L1 having some extra piece here for the thruster, the chest piece, the chin. Mostly head stuff, honestly. Then we have some vent grating, I think for the wings. And then uh, stuff for the 
railguns. Not a very undergated set of runners, but they don't really have to be. Does it for lettered runners? This is the MP runner. This is just a set of manipulators, movable hands. We've seen this before in other master grades. I will not use these a heck of a lot just because it really tends to have a hard time holding weaponry. It's cool for dynamic poses, but I typically prefer the fixed hand poses anyways. Here we have the beam saver runner, just a typical set of beam savers, nothing really crazy to note, just typical pink beam savers. Final runner we have is an action base. Very nice that it comes with an action base. This is a typical action base one. And the stand for it, pretty standard thing. Um, I like when these big winged kits that are very heavy come with an action base. Makes it very nice for posing and whatnot, more stable. You'll notice that the first bag I opened was the shields. We get two of them, one for each arm, beam shields. Has a nice effect on it. Better than the sticker that's on the real grade. So it's nice that this is actually in the plastic itself. From the Perfect Grade Unleashed, it seems some things are following along. Here's some photo etch metal stickers. I found these a little bit hard to put on on the Perfect Grade Unleashed. I found that they needed a little extra glue. They didn't really stick a heck of a lot and they were a little hard to get off the paper. So I'm going to be a little bit better with applying these on the MGEX. Also returning from the PGU, we have just some colored stickers. Um, these usually go for cameras and whatnot, sensors. And it appears that these go all over the kit. I think I saw these in pictures on the Dragoons. These stickers add a whole lot of extra depth to the kit itself, give it that more real robot feel. Because, you know, when you have something like an 18 meter tall mech, you realistically would need these types of markings because it would be so tall, you know, with uh, airspace uh, controls and things such as that. So that's why we have a lot of green and a lot of red. Finally, we have a very simple decal sheet. I'm gonna hope, I hope G Rework is gonna come out with some nice decals for this kit. If not, I'll settle with the Delpy. I never ever liked this honeycomb type pattern on Gundams. I, I never thought it looked particularly pleasing. So I'm definitely more than likely not gonna use these. I don't like Bandai's decals anyways to begin with. They're not even good on the best of, of days. So I'll definitely be doing Delpy, but I'm gonna try and hold up for G rework. Thank you all so much for tuning into this unboxing video of the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. That's gonna be the next build on the channel, so look forward to that. Last build we did was the Real Grade God Gundam, so it's been about five months or so. End of last year got incredibly busy, and I just didn't have the time to sit here and make a new ASMR build video. There's a lot that goes into those videos. It takes a really long time, both with editing and filming. It easily tacks on another eight hours or so onto building the kit itself. So it just takes a lot. Very excited to get back in the saddle on this MGEX though and show you maybe something a little different that you haven't seen. We're definitely gonna do a little bit more of a paint type build with this MGEX and that's something I haven't done on the channel before so I hope you stick around for that. That's something I'm really excited for. I know build comparisons don't make a lot of sense but this is the Perfect Grade Strike Freedom Gundam and this had a similar gimmick where it had a lot of gold plated parts and different shades of gold molded into some of the plastic so it'll be interesting to kind of do a, a, com a cross comparison from the old Perfect Grade to the MGEX. Obviously, surface detail, the MGEX defeats this bar none, but thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been my second unboxing on the channel, and it's going to be my next build on the channel as well. It's been about five, six months since I last built something for the channel, so I'm really excited to get back in the saddle, 
ending of 2022 was a very, very crazy year. In fact, the last build we did was the real grade God Gundam. Great build, nice little kit, but it'll be cool to start dipping my feet back into master grades a little bit. I'm not typically a master grade builder. In fact, real grades are my favorite grade. <laughs> I like the look of the Strike Freedom and I got pretty excited, very excited to, to start cracking in on it. I hope to see you in that video. Got some more stuff in the pipeline coming, some more unboxing videos, maybe another build, a little, you know, in a grade we haven't seen before, but who knows? There's a lot of ideas cooking, finding time for these ideas. That's the hard part. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you in the next video. This has been Gentleman Joe. I'll see you next time.